Next up, we are going to study so-called dual spaces of vector spaces. Um, this is first a linear algebraic construction that I will outline a bit, and then we will see the connection to matrices again. Um, and as I did basically in every section in the last chapters, I guess, uh, I let K be a fixed field throughout all of this section. So without further ado, let me first of all define the notion of a dual space, and this is actually a special case of something that we've already seen. Definition uh, 838. We start with some vector space over K we call V. And we call the space V star, which is defined as the space of linear maps from V into the field K, uh, or in the other notation, HOM VK. This space is called the dual space of V. Uh, the dual space of V. And elements of this dual space, so linear maps from V into this ground field K, uh, elements of V star, they are often called uh, linear forms. Oops. A form is always something mapping into the field, uh, from a vector space into the field. Linear forms, or sometimes by other authors, also called covectors. Okay, that's a bit irritating name, I guess, although it's quite common, but um, yeah, so this is a dual space. So, so far, so good. We haven't seen, uh, yeah, we have, we can imagine what this is. And we have seen that, um, so uh, this is a special case of a space of linear maps between two vector spaces, because K is a vector space over itself. So, um, we have already seen some facts about this, namely, uh, let me summarize this as remark 839. So we've seen that spaces of linear maps are always, uh, again, linear, uh, vector spaces over K. So by theorem, uh, that was 7.4, V star is a vector space over K. And we have already computed the dimension. This is the theorem where I skipped the proof. That's in the contained in lecture notes. It's a bit tedious, but um, doable. So um, yeah, this is, again, um, so the operations, just to recall, if I add two forms, I just add the values of the forms for each point. And if I multiply them by a scalar, it's, I just multiply the value of the form at each point with the same scalar. Now, um, so we have computed the dimension. So in the case that, V is finite dimensional, which we haven't assumed yet. If V is finite dimensional, then by theorem uh, 728, uh, the, we have seen that the spaces of linear maps are then again finite dimensional if both domain and codomain are finite dimensional. And the dimension of V star is now so we've seen the space of linear maps, the dimension was the product of the dimension of the two spaces, and K as a vector space over itself has dimension one. So the dimension of V star is the same as the dimension of V times one, so this doesn't change anything. Okay, so this is what we know about the space. It has the same dimension, uh, and it's a vector space. Um, let me give you uh, one example of how to describe such a dual space in detail, and there I take our favorite example of finite dimensional vector spaces, namely, uh, we take some element phi, a linear form, in the dual space of k to the power of n. Okay, this is our favorite finite dimensional vector space, so in general, so let's take the dual of this. Now, uh, so this would be the linear maps from kn to k. Okay, then first of all, by linearity. Uh, We can write such a map as, uh, so phi of x1 to xn. And I want to express this in terms of a basis, namely in the following way. Um, we have already written uh, this as a linear combination of the canonical base vectors. Namely, this is phi of the sum from 1 to n over xi times ei. And I'm not writing this again. This is the i vector of the canonical basis. Now, by linearity, this is the same as the sum 
from i uh, to, from one to n over uh, x i times phi of e i. So we only need to know the value of uh, phi on these base vectors to know the whole form. So um, yeah, this so this holds true for all x one to x n in k to the n. So uh, this is the way of describing this, but conversely, if we have some arbitrary values uh, in k, conversely, given some values a1 to a n in k, we have seen that for every map from the yeah, between vectors, every linear map, if we have it on the basis, we can always extend some map on the basis, we can always extend this to a linear map and the other way around. So here we see that it's determined by the base, but if we know what the um, linear form looks like on the base vectors, we know everything. So we can just say if we have some n values here given, uh, there exists a unique, so again the symbol with the exclamation mark, there exists a unique phi in kn star with uh, phi of ei is equal to uh, ai for all i between 1 and n. So every map is determined by the values on the basis. This is basically just recovering what we had before. And for each possible choice of values, we get the form. And then uh, if we can, if, if every such, uh, you know, if phi of, th this would be ai, and we call these values ai, we could just insert the ai in here and can obtain every possible form in this way. Which means uh, the dual space is just the space of all maps of the following form. This is the set of all phi from k to the n to k, such that um, there are a n, uh, a1 to a n in k with um, phi of x1 to xn is just given as the sum. Let me write this as a beautiful little sum. a1 x1 plus a2 x2 and so on until we achieve a n x n. Okay, so, oh, and the brace here. <laughs> okay, so in this case, this is really an explicit description of the dual space, all maps of this form. Okay, now in general, for some arbitrary finite dimensional vector space, it's not that obvious of how to define this, and it's no explicit way of doing this, but we can kind of handle this abstractly and work with it. Now, um, what we want to do next is to uh, consider what happens with in, con uh, um, concerning bases. We've seen that the dimension of V is the same uh, dimension of V star, but how can we find bases of the dual space in general? And uh, it turns out there is a nice little construction method, namely given a basis of V, we can obtain, uh, we can construct from this a basis of V star. So this is again a combination of theorem and definition, uh, 841. So let V be a finite dimensional vector space over K. Uh, vector space over K um, and B1 to Bn uh, be an ordered basis of the space of V. Then the family which I call B1 upper star, B2 upper star, and so on, the n upper star, I will define them in a second, uh, is an ordered basis of v upper star, where uh, for each i between 1 and n, um, b i from v to k is or oh, bi in b upper star, so to say, is uh, what a, not beta. bi upper star in uh, v upper star is uniquely defined by, and so we just need to know the values of uh, this bi upper star on the basis, and we want to define this in this way: b upper star, v i upper star of a basis vector b j of this basis is delta ij, and this notation means 
it is one, oh, no space, if i is equal to j and zero if i is not equal to j. Whoops, okay. <laughs> Looks even messier now. Anyway, so this is the way how we find this. We want the unique linear form such that it's one on the vector bi and zero on all others. This is kind of the way how we get a basis. And this is always an ordered basis. Um, this symbol here, this delta ij, is by definition just this. And I will use this notation in the following. So uh, we have something which depends on i and j, and this is just supposed to mean it's i, uh, it's one if the two coincide and zero anywhere else. Um, this symbol is sometimes called the Kronecker delta. It's often called Kronecker delta after its inventor. Uh, Kronecker delta. Um, anyway, so this is how we can define a basis. This is the theorem part of the statement. Now for the definition. Um, this basis of the dual space, B1 star to Bn star, is called the... Um, get the grammar right, uh, and uh, yeah, the dual basis two, I always have to think if there's two or off, but I don't want to be too precise. I hope this is fine for every native speaker. If this is a mistake, I'm sorry. Um, the dual basis to the basis B1 to Bn. So the dual basis. So this is how we can always obtain a basis. And the proof will be skipped. Um, so I just mentioned this a bit in the lecture notes because basically what you have to do is to take, um, if you take a look at the proof where we saw, uh, where, where I did the dimension of the space of linear maps, which I didn't carry out in the lecture here, um, there I constructed the basis in the proof, basically. And this is just a special case of that particular proof. This, uh, yeah, there is a more general construction, but if you boil this down to this setting here, there you get the dual basis exactly. And so this is con was already contained in that proof. So I won't do it here. But this is kind of how we can always define a, ba a dual basis to a given basis. Okay, that's a bit abstract. So let us do as an example. Um, okay, let me uh, reobtain this. So re uh, example 842. Okay, let's take our favorite field. Let's take the real numbers. Uh, consider a basis of the real numbers, um, uh, not of the real numbers, but of R2, B, consisting of uh, B1, B2, an ordered basis whoops, of R2. Oh, have the simplest non-trivial vector space. Uh, oh, I can't write anymore, sorry. Of R2. Okay, so, and I want the following given by B1 is supposed to be the vector 2 comma 1 and B2 is supposed to be the vector 3 comma 1. It's quite easy to see that they are indeed uh, linearly independent, so um, yeah, that they form then a basis. Um, so yeah, this, this I want to hear, but this is a basis. And we want to describe the, uh, yeah, I want to find the dual basis, uh, B upper star with B1 upper star and B2 upper star. Now, how can we determine this ma uh, these maps? Um, let's take, uh, let's maybe, yeah, I think I need to erase, otherwise I have to squeeze here at no. Uh, no. Um, Sorry, made a tiny mistake. Um, we want the dual basis B upper star, where I call the elements phi 1 and phi 2, with phi i defined to be the dual of B i, uh, so B i upper star for each i, uh, for i in 1, 2. Okay, now how can we, um, how can we now uh, define, or how can we compute these elements? What I want to do is again to use this coordinate description and to compute these vectors in a form which is, um, uh, is here. Like, or here's the general form. So I want to describe it in this way with respect to this field, uh, yeah, k equal to r. 
So um, how can I define it in this way? And I will use the approach that I did uh, yeah, here, so to use the canonical base vectors here, namely in the following way. So uh, we note that in this case, phi of x1, x2 as an element of R2, this is now x1 times phi of the first vector of the canonical basis, 1, 0, uh, I'm still messing up, sorry, plus x2 times phi of 0, 1. And this is indeed the case for all x1, x2 in R2 and all phi in R2 to upper star. So what we need to do is to find, if, if you know that uh, the dual basis vectors, they are of course defined by the properties what they do on these two vectors, then we have to check what they do on the canonical base vectors and then compute the numbers and see what happens. Uh, let me erase and then I will hopefully have a bit nicer blackboard scheme. Anyway, let me erase. <laughs> 